grabs your legs, how can you do this fake bike to tell you how dangerous bullshit news is for your health? Listen to Charlie LaDuff, but don't bullshit news out. Ow. I'll beat it. That's what I take my glasses off like crack guy. This just did breaking news. No more bullshit. No more bullshit. No bullshit. Na 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 na. No bullshit. No bullshit. All right. What up, though, Bobby? Hey, Charlie. How are we doing today? It's gonna be an erratic show. I got the stomach flu, man. Ugh. I hate that. Creeping cucarachas, if you know what I'm saying. I'm no, I do. Maybe I have to pause once or twice. <laughs> run up to the toilet. We'll edit that out. Uh, you notice Drew's uh, gutters are falling off his house? I did notice that. The house is skank, man. I'm going to get some uh, construction guys over here doing my favor. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. No Bullshit News Hour episode. Who knows? 63. Is it? Yeah. Well, I think we're over about 3 million now, man. Something like that. Wow. You know why? It's a good concept. Because where people come to get the no bullshit news. You know, there's a lot of people listening. I, yeah. I, I was in court all week. You know, Frank Murphy Hall of Justice, yep. Detroit, Third Circuit Court. There's a lot of people listening. And then a lot of people think I'm dead. <laughs> think what you're you dead? Mean? What happened to you? I'm like, I didn't die. Oh, my God. I'm going to go to the no bullshit news. Everybody, please do me a favor and tell your people. You can find me and Bob and Karen Dumas and Man Can Joe here at the No Bullshit News Hour no BS, newshour.com, or use those apps on your phone, podcast app, and download it. S- subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcasts at. Give us a review. Give us a rating. Give us a like. Because it's next week's news today. And today, we, you know, we're going to do a little bit of last week's news, but get this shit straight. Because that's what we're doing here. Before we do that, we're going to go, what are we going to talk about today? Impeachment, Congressman Brenda Lawrence backtracking, uh... Slipping Jimmy Craig, the chief of police, and what the fuck is going on in there? I got the update uh, for you, folks, on the fake signature. Uh, Kid Rock, I know Kid Rock. I've been to his home. Is is he a racist? Is he a racist or is he not? And uh, an update on uh, Annie, the old ancient recluse of Gratiot Avenue, the sad, bizarre, and true ending to that saga. You're going to want to hear this. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, let me tell you, the American Coney Island is a proud sponsor of the No Bullshit News Hour. It's the holiday time, folks. You can ship a Coney kit. That's a dozen dogs and all the fixing this Christmas to the doorstep of someone you love, whether they're from Detroit or not. They love these things. Can't get enough of them. They love them on the border. They love them in the coasts. You know why they love them? Because they're delicious. They're tasty. They are very good. The the dogs snap. They do indeed. Made especially for American Coney Island, as is their chili. No one else has that. No, it's delicious. So listen, (laughs) to get the Coney, excuse me, everybody, I'm sick, but uh, remember, Christmas coming soon. Go to AmericanConeyIsland.com, order your Coney kit. I, as the handyman at American Coney, will be one of those guys packing your kit. Oh, nice. With love, because... Marin Coney Island gives health care, Bob, and I'm not the kind of guy waiting for the government to give me some... Not taking care of you, you're taking care of I yourself. I gotta do it. I'm, yeah. I'm, proud to, I'm proud to work, I'm proud to do the news, it's, it's a good life. There you go. So, okay. So go down and get those Coney kits, and uh, if you want to send your favorite podcaster, me, uh, a Coney kit for Christmas, I would happily accept that. By care of Red Shovel Network, House of Skank, <laughs> Ferndale, Michigan. Blah, zitty, blah. All right, listen, uh, we were away last week, but did you, you know, we had Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence of the 14th Congressional District here in Michigan, Detroit, and... Uh, she made some news on the show. Well, she made, that went all over the place. Well, go ahead, Bob. What, what, what was it? Uh, she, uh, she said she didn't support an impeachment. 
a liberal Democrat from an unchallenged seat in a swing state yeah. says, I do not support impeachment. I'd rather have a censure, a, a paddling, a scarlet letter, a, re- uh, a letter on the record, on the for, record. forever yeah. that you did badly because I thought it was quite brave. Well, yeah, and I mean, I, I, I can understand where, where she's coming from. I, it's, it, you know, impeachment is it's the, the end-all, be-all of what they can do. She's like, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really go there. I don't, well, I don't want to rip the country up either. It smells well, political. It, it, it's yeah, too close exactly. to an election. And to me, it sounded like even she respects the will of, you know, the Trump voter. Like, right. No, she definitely respected the, the will of the voter. Um, you know, the only thing that I took issue with is that, yeah, I would say, you know, this close to an election, you know, an impeachment, is thing, let, let, the, let the voters decide, except for the fact he was trying to influence the election. You know, so that was... That, you, that, you would think. Well, you, first of all, why, think. why don't, before we go crazy here, why don't we um, play that clip of what it is she actually said. Let's get this straight. There's a couple things that happen in impeachment. Sitting here knowing how divided this country is, I don't see the value of taking him out of office, but I do see the value of putting down a marker, saying his behavior is not acceptable. You cannot use your power of the presidency to withhold funds to get a foreign country to investigate an American citizen for your own personal gain. To hear you say, and you are a Democrat, and you are a liberal-minded person, I know you don't like Trump, but you said for the betterment of all of us in an election year that it's unwise to tear him from the chair. Is that how you think? Yes. I, I wow. want him censored. It, it's no way you can cut it. It's unacceptable. That's clear as day. Clear as day. So what happens when, you know, Rush Limbaugh and Fox and Washington Examiner picks that up? It gets reported like there's fissures in, in the, the Democratic in the Party. Democratic fund, the stunt that they're doing is starting to fall apart that, you know, behind cl- uh, closed doors, they know what's up and they're trying to find another way. But, so what happens? As soon as this thing starts taking off, she clarifies her statements, which is, I was an early supporter uh, for impeachment in 2017. The House Intelligence Committee followed a very thorough process in holding hearings. The information they revealed confirmed that this president has his views of his power in office. Therefore, I continue to support impeachment. However, I'm very concerned about Senate Republicans and the fact they would find this behavior by the president acceptable. So she means they're going to acquit him in the Senate in the trial. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's and, a flip flop. And he would totally claim exoneration. <laughs> You know, when he's not, when he's acquitted in the Senate. I was totally exonerated. He'd be impeached. He'd be. But yeah, it's, it's, a reverse, Andrew Johnson, it's, a, it's a reversal for Brenda Lawrence. Bill Clinton and Donald Trump. Yeah, it is a yeah. reversal for her. Yeah. You know, and you could say it's cowardly, and I don't say that. You know what it is? It's politics. It's pragmatic. Nancy Pelosi called her up and said, what the fuck are you doing? Right. Shut your mouth. Right. Let's stay together. So now, we're, 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 as Brenda said. On the last show, broadcast, excuse me, because this is news, news, it's going to follow a script. They're going to impeach on partisan lines, right? That's the indictment. Right, it's gonna... which, you, which you heard here on our show. Yes. She said it was already scripted. Yeah, she was like, it's... She, 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 did, she said she didn't write the script, but it was already scripted, and this is how it's going to go. I called it a shit show. She called yeah. it a bubble, and we all know how it's going to go. That's why I don't think a lot of people are even paying attention to it, frankly. Uh, there's a certain percentage. I don't think a lot of people. I don't, they, I, I don't think the overwhelming majority of people are paying attention to it. You got too much going on. You, she's got to pay, pass Thanksgiving. I got to worry about Christmas shopping, doing all this shit. I don't give a fuck. What Economy's the- good. Election's coming up. You know, yeah. not to say that what's going on isn't serious. We all know it is. It is. We all have our feelings, right? And my job is to talk to people. A lot of people just think it's, it's bullshit. Right. I mean, it's two bit. Two years of collusion, and we got to have this one. And a lot of people rightly, I think, know he did this and think it is a big deal. Me, I'm like, it's not as big as bombing Laos. You know what I'm saying? But No. No, well, and, and that's the current narrative that's that's being played out right now. They're talking about 
you know, the Democrats are bringing up in this impeachment uh, inquiry, uh, the the two year Mueller report. Well, y- you know, the, the Mueller report came and went, whatever. They didn't do anything about it. Let's leave that in the past. Don't bring that back up into. Why not? That's that's the, we, we lived there for two years and they did find something. And again, well, no, they did. They, they found. Look, there's no doubt in my mind when from reading that report, the, the man obstructed justice. He right. it, it, uh, instructed his lawyers to go out and lie. Right. He's obstructing justice on a crime he didn't commit. It's a, you know what I mean? He didn't collude with the Russians. Mueller told you that. Don't don't No, but text me or you know, flag me or post on my page that but, but that's the, not the truth. The cover up is always worse than the crime. It was no crime. Well, but there was cover up. And yes, did did you know? Giuliani's people have contact with people around the Russians, you know, like Roger Stone saying he's in touch with WikiLeaks and the yeah. Russians blah blah blah. Yes. Well, and, 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 and on that note, I hadn't even thought about talking about this, but how ridiculous is it that Rudy Giuliani's in the center of this fucking storm about his contacts with the Ukraine and what they're doing there and, and Trump and Ukraine and, you know, pressuring and this quid pro quo and all this and that. And the motherfucker goes to Ukraine this past week. That's, you know, it's like, that's ballsy. That's a big ballsy. That's ballsy. These, these two guys are New Yorkers. They don't fucking care. One of the biggest developers in New York, right? And a yeah. New York developer is like, you know, brass balls guy. Right. And Giuliani used to be mayor. Before that, he was the uh, chief was the, prosecutor. You know, for the he, Southern District of New York. He yeah. Off. He took out mob guys. He took out uh, Ed Koch's whole criminal uh, underworld there. You know, the he put the president. Uh, of Queens County on the stand, who he ends up stabbing himself to death with a steak knife in his heart. He takes stabbed out, himself to death. Yeah, with a steak knife. Holy shit! Yeah, holy shit! He took out the leader, Democratic leadership of the Bronx, of Brooklyn. Yeah, he's a big baller. He, he was a crime fighter. <laughs> and look at him now. No, and look at him now. These New York guys. Okay, so anyway. Yeah, we digress. No, we don't. But. Yeah. My week, the reason this show's fucked up and Karen can't be here. She was supposed to be here, but she's got to get a roof put on. Manic and Joe's studying today. We're actually... Which is crazy because she's having a roof put on, and I'm having a roof put on. Yeah. They just finished up yesterday. Go figure that, Bob. And they, they I haven't finished. They haven't taken the... <laughs> Breaking news. Bob roof news. Roof. roof news. But I, I was sitting in Third Circuit Court all week in Detroit. Yeah. Right? Uh, Big case. Remember the... the the little baby, the toddler, the three-year-old's on his way to see uh, Sesame Street Live. Going, he loved Elmo. With his dad. And in it, no, with his auntie and another Oh, that's right. He was with his mom. And somebody, some asshole, pull up, was upset that auntie uh, cut him off, a little road rage, and he put a slug into the car and it killed the, the baby. And then Christian Miller, right? This case is the most lockdown case I've ever seen. And I've... Been to a lot. Phil Spector, I covered, and uh, Michael, Michael Jackson, Jackson. Yeah, you name it, I've been to. You've court. been in a lot of court. I've cases. seen lockdown case. This is the most lockdown case I've ever seen. Two witnesses, right? See the guy. He tells the chief of police of Detroit Public Schools, Ralph Godby, he confesses well, to him. He confessed that he did it because Godby walked him into the regular police because this dude was afraid the police going to hurt him or something. So then there's ancillary video, the guy taking the car to a car wash, trying to vacuum it out, looking for the shell casing. And you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, this is, this is, this is amazing. This is l- the defense lawyer says to the woman in the car with him when he told her to lean back so he could fire out the window at the car with the baby in it. Right. Allegedly, this guy's name is right in front of her. Derek Dermott. She lays back right across her grill, right into the car. He says to her, cross-examination, madam. Were you angry the car caught you on? Yeah. So angry that uh, you might have put a bullet into that car? And that was enough. So this guy... That was enough sowing doubt. Yes. So this guy, Derek Durham, never takes a stand. Never accuses her. Never took the stand. Right. He never takes a stand and accuses the woman. Which is his right. Which is his right. Evidentiary right. right. And in fact, the jury can't assume or presume... He's guilty because he won't defend himself. He can't take that into consideration. Right. That's enough to have a hung jury. Oh, my God. A hung jury. 
that's justice for real. That the way that we, the people, experience justice, live it in real places. You know what I mean? Not like on TV. Just getting back to impeachment. Yeah, I think a prevailing attitude among people. Well, many people. I don't want to assume you, the listener, have this attitude. But if you don't have Yes, the president in writing or on tape or what have you, something directly pointing to him saying, you know, withhold the aid until these fuckers investigate Biden. Let's shake him down and bribe him and extort him. If you don't have that, the biggest chair in the land, you, you really think the Senate's going to take him out? Do you really think that? Let me say it this way. I said, I'm not going to say who. I don't want anybody to get in trouble. I said to one of the, the lawyers, many lawyers, in fact, in the courthouse, I said, if that Trump extortion bribery case with the Ukraine was, was a case that you were handed, would this thing be going to trial in Wayne County Circuit Court? I said, fuck no. No. Because they couldn't prove it? The prosecutor didn't even bring the case. Because they're not... A, you know, they had this guy on videotape. They had two witnesses. They, they had his jailhouse conversations recorded. Oh, my mama, you going away. And they had the woman in the car. Yes. Saying, yeah, he fired the gun. Yes. And they had the woman in the car say, I looked and he, and he pointed at me. Hung jury. Hung jury. Oh, my gosh. That, the, the extortion case in Washington wouldn't even come close to the courtroom yeah. in Wayne County. And that's, you can't blame people for, <clears throat> for saying, I don't see it. Even though I believe, yeah, I believe Trump did that. Those are impeachable offenses. I just don't think you have enough. Does that make sense? It does. I mean, in, in, in and, that- Lauren, and Brenda Lawrence knows it. Right. Well, and she's she's a smart woman, very savvy. I think she's brave. I think she's savvy. So she mean, got scared of Nancy Pelosi. Well, there are political ramifications, you know, of her decisions. But I mean, I think she shows her courageousness of independent thought. Well, you know, for a minute. For a minute. Till Tubby Rush Limbaugh gets on it, they, he played our clip. You know, I know we were. <laughs> Picked us up on this. I show. was told he made he, he made fun of us too. He's like, "Well, how many list downloads they get? Se- six, seven? Really? Is that what he said? <laughs> I, I look. I didn't hear it, but that's what I was told. Jesus. If you said that, Rush, eat it, buddy. Eat it, dude. Or not eat it. You should go on a diet. Eat it, bro. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Don't fat shame the guy. Oh, come body shame. Him. What are you, Kid Rock over there? <laughs> oh damn. <Let's>, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Rush. We do the work, dude. You just riff off of work others do. So please, respect. And thanks for the mention. Appreciate it. Uh, No Bullshit News Hour is brought to you by ADR Consultants. They are experienced. They're competent. Honest, ethical, smart. They have overseen. Listen, in a time where we don't trust the government, all our money seems to be vanishing. ADR has overseen more than a quarter billion dollars in public and private construction projects since 2001. They can reduce costs, increase your bottom line, and save you millions. And get the job done. Yeah. ADR consultants are experts in procurement and government compliance. Call Barry Ellen Tuck 248-318-9424 for a consultation. Uh, Get the job done right. On time, on budget, ADR consultants 248-318-9424 and brought to you by Luke Nowacki at Pinnacle Wealth. Give Luke a call at 248-663-4748 for rational financial advice. We're cutting interest rates. We need to raise interest rates. We're in a bubble. We're not in a bubble. How do you know what's right for you, what's right for your organization, what's right for your company? Luke, won't pull it out of the drawer. It's not one size fits all. In fact, let me tell you a story real quick. Let me give the number one more time. 248-663-4748. And let me give says legal nonsense. And then they tell you a quick story. Securities and Investment Advisory Services offered through Royal Alliance Associates, Inc. Member F I N R A S I P C Royal Alliance Associates, Inc. is separately owned in other entities and or marketing names, products, or services referenced here are independent of Royal Alliance Associates, Inc. I'm at a fundraiser charity event the other night. Somebody told me he, he and his company called Luke Nowacki for some investment advice. Right? Right. Luke comes on down, takes time out of his day, sits there. They have a few hours meeting, and he finally says, what I'm doing is not exactly right for you. Like, the the expertise you're requiring and the thing I think you need, and he refers him to somebody else. 
and it's no charge. Wow. They said to me. That's an honest dude. They said to me, what you said about Luke is true. Like, they were very impressed with the guy. Yeah. That's all I'm saying, folks, is he's not a, this isn't one of those blank the airwaves and uh, try to drum up some business. He's, he's, he's doing right by you. This guy's for real, man, and he was uh, the guy that helped pay for that lunch for first responders last year. Tacone, nice. we're, we're going to put something together again. Nice. You know I, mean? I got to give him a call. You do. I've already called Hall Financial. They're taking care of my thing. I did my refinance. They're great. And now I need to talk to Luke because I got to get my stuff Absolutely. nailed down. I recommend that, Bob. Okay, look, let's go now. Uh, Detroit Police. Uh, Corporal Rashid uh, McLean was laid to rest last week. As you know, I have met the man. He's a quality person, uh, an excellent cop. The world and and the city of Detroit has really lost somebody. I won't overdo it. These always make me sad. And I didn't want to be political. Fortunately, they are. Didn't want to be political till he was laid to rest. So that's what we're, we've done. And now he shall not have died in vain. I'm gonna, RIP. I'm going to follow up. Let's not forget what happened, and we want the answers. This is no bullshit news. This isn't your candy-ass newspapers where we get distracted and you run on down the road. Point number one. Chief of Police James E. Craig gave Corporal McLean a posthumous promotion to sergeant, to which was the applause line and the standing ovation. That's become his standard line now. Give posthumous promotions. By my count, I, it's 12 or 13. It's, it's a few, yeah. <laughs> Since I've been here, I moved home. 2008. I count 13 officers died on the job Wow! in Detroit. More than one a year is such a dangerous job. Yeah. So that, you know, that's nice on his plaque among the fallen on the wall of police headquarters. But that promotion to sergeant does not come with anything. The wife does not receive benefits of a sergeant. She didn't receive benefits of the police officer. She gets the police officer's benefit. You know what I mean? Like his, his pension. Right. You don't get sergeant's pensions. Doesn't get a little something extra in the check. The kids don't get health care. They took that. Right. So that's nice. And thanks for honoring a great man. A great on, co- great on, pap- co- on paper. On um, paper. So I mean that's what we're talking about. Yeah. So what a what a colossal mess. Now remember we told you folks, because we just want to finish these stories up. We reported here first. That the, 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 the man that, who's been charged with his murder, with the Officer McLean's murder, right, Jujuwan Parks, we reported that the police had his name weeks before Jujuwan Parks shot the officer to death. They had the name from people living in a house that Jujuwan Parks shot up, and that's the very same house that weeks later... Rasheen goes into and, and dies. He was killed, yeah. And we forced it. Listen, here's what the chief had to say last week. This is the proof of it. We also know that the occupants, you know, did make an effort after that initial uh, report of shots fired, uh, that they came back to the station to provide more detailed information uh, on this suspect. So we're in the process of really digging into that because I want to know, how did the ball get dropped there? We really want to know the answer to that. Yeah, we do want the answer to that. Yeah, we really want, <laughs> want the, the answer, answer to that. Because this is a pattern. They came to you with the name. Said this guy. Yes. This guy here. Watch him. Please help us protect us from him. <laughs> and everybody, Damn look, go. go like this. You can go to something called Otis. It's the uh, offender tracking informational system for Michigan. Right. Put Jujuan Parks in there. Just put his name in there, and you see he's a parolee. Right. That's what reporters do. All right, let's check this guy out real quick. He ever, you know, been in a can for a felony? Boom, there he is. Yeah. There's his mug shot. His background. Okay, simple. Now you're a cop. You go, they got better so- software and different databases than Otis, right? They well, put his name in, and they know. Right. And they had the name. And did they run it? Because now you know a suspect in a... Shooting of a house with a with a history of of you with know an assault rifle right and a history of shooting people that's caused to be violated from parole, locked back up 
while they find out, hey, while well, you get your trial, right? right? And maybe your hung jury. Yeah. This guy's dead. It didn't have to be. At the same time, Jujuan was driving around the city, was, at least two other shooting incidents where another guy's dead. A 30 year old man is dead. Yeah. Yeah, I really want to know. Yeah, dude, we're going to yeah, stay. Yeah, he's on- a bad dude. Chief, you know we're going to stay on it. You know this time we're going to. Because listeners of this show know over the course of the year, how many of these just went by the wayside? Too many. So what during? Too many. Too many. During that press conference, though, it's the old sleight of hand. Watch this. Well, says the chief, the supervisor on that scene that was supposed to help McLean and the other officers never made the scene because he was a coward and he was a block away cowering in his squad car, right? And it turns out, that the cowering sergeant who has now retired due to PTSD from doing 20 years on the job, apparently. Turns out five years ago, he was fired from the job for cowardice for watching his female partner get her ass beat by a detainee. Somehow. Gets his job back. Got his job back. And the only way you could get your job back is there would be a settlement between the union and the city and the police department. And Jimmy. And the leadership of the police department. Specifically, the chief of the department who would have to sign off on it, and apparently he did, except he says it wasn't his signature. The chief says, I sign in green ink, everybody knows that, and this was signed in purple ink. This is the what's that got to do with not going to get Juju on? I don't know. Right. It's a nice story, and we, the fish in the media, will flop after it like we're going for a, you know, a worm on a hook. Here, go ahead, Chief. Play, Chief. It's a good one. I hate to use the word forged because that constitutes a crime. I will just say that someone signed my name and it was not my signature. Now, has that ever been done? Rarely, especially on a significant decision. Even if I'm out of town on vacation, uh, if David or James or the acting chiefs of police, they will call me and say, I want verbal approval because this is a significant decision. And they might sign for me. Generally what happens, there's a signature. They will sign his full name and then it'll say four. That's the process in place. And so I was stunned as we looked back at the records and saw this signature. And, And the other thing that everyone in this organization knows I sign in one color and one color only. That color would be green. Keep the green pen with me at all times. I signed in no other color. This signature was in purple. Now that might sound minuscule, not really important, but it is important because many of the viewers, your listeners are wondering, how could this person who had a serious allegation that was terminated uh, be returned to the Detroit Police Department? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you wonder, how, how could he be returned? Yeah, the, we, yeah, it's serious, all right. Oh, yeah. So let's get this straight. Somebody faked your name? Faked his signature. You faked your name? You're aware of this guy. This, this guy was a big deal back in the day. He's right on the chief's radar. Somebody faked your name? He's back on the job as a supervisor? What's going on? After being fired for cowardice. Somebody's faking the chief's signature? Oh, by the way, folks. As your representative, thank you for patronizing the show. Thank you for listening uh, to the ads for American Coney Island, Luke Nowacki, ADR, High Hall Financial. They make it possible for me, just like you going, what the fuck? They faked your name. This one's in purple. I made them show it to me. First of all, I got a couple of handwriting samples of Chief Craig's, my own. Right. Then I went there, and I, I want to see the purple signature. It's true. It wasn't the same signature. And then they provided handwriting samples. I'm going to keep on it. So, someone faked your name. Well, who? Look, let me tell you, bro. I don't know. <laughs> when right. I would fake my mom's name when I'm, you know, tardy to high school. Right. You're doing the, you know, I need a slip from your mother. I'd fake the name, and they caught me. Right. The high school truancy office caught me. And now... It, What's wrong? Why isn't Jujuan getting picked up when he's shooting guns off? Everybody knows his name in three jurisdictions. 
Yeah. They're faking your name. There ain't no reason that guy should be on the job. Oh, my God, man. Look, you know, narcotics. They got caught stealing dope, right? Again. Again. Yeah. The chief reconstituted the department, and they did it again, and I heard it's much deeper than what we've heard. Really? Yeah. Oh, the deputy wow. chief of police, his right-hand woman, who maybe, I'm not saying she did, it could have been anybody. Who the hell faked his name? But she went to prison for taking a $4,000 bribe that she insists she thought was a loan that she never paid back. Yeah. Come on. That's usually how loans go. You, know, you get some money, you don't have to pay it back. That's, uh, that's okay. Oh, my God. Right, look here. Uh, where are we at? Kid Rock. How do you explain this one? What, what? That's a hell of a segue there, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Evidence. Go, go from Chief Craig to Kid Rock. I, eh, I, I buy it. <laughs> there you go. I mean. <laughs> More bullshit. <laughs> well, he's a racist again, apparently. Oh, boy. How do I, how do I even line this up for folks? Um, Go ahead. Tell tell everybody. What well, we- I mean, he was down at his uh, his bar in Nashville. He owns his bar in Nashville, and uh, he wasn't performing, but he he came up on stage. Fucked and, up, and and he was fucked up. Oh, he was he, drinking. He fucked up. I don't think he would deny it. Had a drink in his hand. He had his drink in his hand while he was doing it. Yeah. And uh, and he went off on a little bit of a rant, and then people lost their goddamn minds about what he said and what it meant and. They're still losing his minds, and I'm and I, I like I said, getting ready for this show. I must have watched this thing ten fucking times, and uh, you know, and, and maybe I'm an idiot. I don't know. I mean, I'm not the smartest guy in the room, but it didn't seem racist to me. It certainly had a level of misogyny in there. Sure, I get that, and I don't think he would deny that. But. Well, it did, like I said, it, Does, it didn't seem racist to me. And he went off on Oprah and Joey, ba- jo- jo- Joey jo- Behar. Joey Behar, yeah. The View. Right. So he, he went off on a black woman and he went off on a white woman. And, you know, and he said, you can suck my dick sideways and whatever. And, yeah, there's some misogyny there, sure. And I guess you could take issue with that. It wasn't racist. Was it? Well, you have a clip? I do have a clip. All right. I do have a clip. Well, let's and, let everybody hear it. We'll see. Because a lot of was, people think that's a heavy charge that racist, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's let's let people listen. Hey, I don't like Oprah Winfrey or Joy Payhart. I think it's Oh my god, racist! Oprah Winfrey. Ah! Oprah Winfrey's like, hey. <laughs> look at I want to get some white women to believe in this. And if you say that, you're like, hey, well, I'm pretty sure Kid Rock's a racist. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. I mean, he, he even admits it. You know, he's like, okay, fine, whatever. You say what you want to say. Right. Um, but. Yeah, no, he, he he went off on Oprah Winfrey and Joy Behar, and you know it was misogynistic in that they can took my dick sideways and all. That. But he did but, he, he did say like Oprah says something a white women believe her. That that was the only part that in 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 in, in introduced any part of race where he said oh, well white women you know they they say this and that or or Oprah says to say white women say this or that, but. I don't know. It didn't come off as racist to me. Well, I guess it did. You know what? I'll tell you what, dude. I mean. I'll tell you what. You're a white dude. Oh, yeah. Right? I'm a mostly white dude. You know, a lot of different blood in me, but, you know, I mean. Yeah. Love my, well, love my white blood. Love my <laughs> black blood. Love my red blood. Love my Jewish blood. Right. I'm not sure I heard it either. Now, I've been to Kid Rock's home. I know this guy. Just, I was with you to Kid Rock's home. You know? Been there on other occasions. Not many. Right. Right? I don't know his middle name. Right. You know, I mean, I'm not like that with him, but I've always found him to be a decent guy to people. And I'll say this, to this city, personally, handed to me a check in the high five figures to take care of the widow and children of fallen responders in this town, black and white and brown. I right. know that, and he didn't want. And that's what he does. He didn't want me to tell you that. Like, and I'm not. Look, I'm not gonna defend the guy. I, you know what I mean. But I just didn't hear that. But then again, we all hear things differently, don't we? 
We do. I mean, and and uh, look, I, I I didn't hear it either. I mean, and you know the 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 one and only time I was at Kid Rock's house, we were having fun. There were black people there. You know, he wasn't. His son's black. And his son's black. And and on this clip, you know, and yeah, like I said, it, it may have been a little heavy on the misogyny, whatever. Um, but whatever, that's that's Kid Rock. But it wasn't racist. I, I think I, I, I think think it's didn't interesting, see it as like like the the Kid Rock's Kid Rock's uh, restaurant at the Little Caesars Arena, right? Yeah, is going to close. Right, well, he's and, closing it. And the Illich family wants to say, like, you know, they've asked him to move on because they don't like this kind of uncouth character. They want to be all inclusive and love the community. And then Kid Rock saying, "I wasn't renewing it anyway." Right, right. It's dead there. Nobody goes to it. It's right. failing. I would have liked to take him to see, see him take a little more anti-millionaire uh, stand and say, like, "Fuck, I'm not working with the fucking Illiches anymore." Well, I, I, you know, I don't but, want to move uh, it aside, but I got an. I, I just got to say this point. I find it rich, really charming, that Chris Illich would profess his love for the community when it's him drawing the money out of the Detroit public schools yeah. that were primarily to black pay for children's his study fucking arena. to pay for the arena that he doesn't put any money back into the community with. That's yeah. rich. That but is rich. I tell you what, I'm going to take care of some business here, Hall Financial. Do me a favor. Look, dude, here's the number. Uh, this Malik Shabazz, the Garveyite New Black Panther Party. Call him right now. Okay, there you go. Let's call, let's call the Black Panthers and see what they think. I'm going to get the Black Panther take on it because this show, everybody's welcome and, and, you know, has a point of view. and We're not afraid to listen to it. Let me tell you about Hall Financial, who's received more than 900 five-star reviews from their happy clients, including Bob Shettlebauer, and they'd like to top 1,000 by the end of the year. Their team of mortgage professionals provides every client with VIP service, ensuring they feel like a name and not a number. What if I told you you could skip a mortgage payment and lower your payments? What if I told you Hall Financial will not only walk you through the process of buying your home, but provide you with the top realtor in your area? Who doesn't want that type of service? Hall Financial knows how to deliver five-star service. That means your schedule, your availability, nights or weekends. They're going to work for you, and you won't be charged hidden fees. You know what you're getting when you work with Hall Financial. Call them today, 248-308-5000 if you're looking to purchase or refinance. You can chat with them online, davidhallmortgage.com. Give them a call today. The official mortgage lender, the No Bullshit News Hour, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS, one four six seven four three five Hall and I, Financial, and I would just like to add, I worked with Hall Financial. I just did a refi with them, and Chris Pizzuli was my was my rep. He was fantastic. They made it so easy, and it was quick. I closed in like twelve days. You know what we're gonna do for Christmas? I, I want to take Christmas off. You can do a special hour just getting a boner over <laughs> all of our. Well, I was that was so thrilled with them. You know, man, well, you know what you should next time you get that roof. Call ADR Consultants <laughs> to make sure it gets done, it's done right. right, on time, ethically, and smart. That's the only one you have I'm just done saying, it. Hall Financial was fantastic. Reach out to them. They will take care of every all your needs. They will they will help you with what you need help with. And I can't wait to call Luke and Wacky because I need to get my finances in order. You could be sure. It's not all the time. I don't bet. Sometimes people come to us through Drew, but we like to have advertisers we believe in. True that. Oh, and by the way, if they fuck up, that's on them. I'm not on trial here. People do funny things, but not, you know, not our people. Yeah. God, God willing. You got the Malik Shabazz? I do indeed. The Garveyite New Black Panther Party? Uh, Minister Shabazz, are you there, sir? Yes, sir, Charlie. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it, brother. Thank you for having me. What's going on? What, 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 what is this like? E you got an Easter basket. It sounds like you're so happy. <laughs> well, well, hey, it's a great day to be alive, brother. Let me tell you something. True that. Any day I wake up, I think I feel like it's the best day of my life. Excuse me, minister. Let me, you know, yeah, it's Malik Shabazz, but you are a Christian minister, correct, sir? Correct. So you got you got Jesus in your heart. I got Jesus, but I prefer I, I I usually refer to him as Justice Christ. But yeah, that's okay. him. Justice Christ. So you're not afraid of death. In fact, you know a better world's on the other side. So who cares if you get up? You know what I mean? Well, I I don't know a better world's on the other side. I believe. Uh, a better world is on the other side. See that? Thank see that? See that? The minister is a reasonable man. He knows. 
belief. The basis, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. I have seen the other side. I believe, I, I speculate, but I know right here. But whatever goes on after this life is going to be based on what we do, what we don't do, what we say, what we don't say, when we stand up for the poor, for the needy, not the greedy, right here in this world. Isn't that right? That Amen. Confident of. I believe I can fly. Yeah. I, I, believe, I believe I can touch the sky. Thank I you. believe I can fly, but I ain't going to mess with underage children. <laughs> <laughs> well played, sir. Yeah, I hate pedophiles. I hate I them. I definitely ain't going to fool with that. <laughs> All right, we won't talk about Charles Pugh. And I hope oh, I hope yeah. he's stuffed in a broom, broom closet somewhere up north, if you know what I'm saying. Well, he might be happy. You know, there's a saying. Oh, I, I yeah. say, but there is a saying, old school street saying, about certain people and in cars. But I'm going to leave that alone. No, no, go ahead. It's, it's, our, look, <laughs> it's Christmas show. We don't Come censor on, here. Go ahead. What, what's the old school saying? About well, pedophiles up know, in prison. They say you're as happy as a... A sister in prison. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm gonna leave <laughs> that alone. <laughs> I got enough trouble. I'm not trying to offend hey, anybody. I think you just, I think you already said, I think you're already in trouble. Hey, everybody and knows I, what you're saying. I, 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 and the thing I of it is, everybody. the thing of it and is, Rev, everybody love, agrees with you. For those I don't love, I'm trying to learn. Hot of love, and it ain't easy. Let me back up, boys. Trouble. Let me back up, boys. This is a nice segue to hear about. Y'all using the word sissy. That could apply you men are homophobic. Oh boy. I hate. Uh that could that could be that could happen. Are you, Minister or Bob, are you homophobes? No. Minister? Uh as one who loves God, again, my charge is to try to love everybody. I'm not there, but I know it is right, and I am working on it. I am a lot older now and a little bit wiser, and my goal is no one should be oppressed. So uh, what, you're no saying is, what you're saying is you've grown in life. The, I'm, I'm growing. The God young, ain't cool with me yet. Be, before... You know, your conversion and you, you saw the light and, and you know, you, you you were like a young wild guy out on the streets. You were one of them dudes. You were thugging it. What What is your, your, your birth name? What was your name given to you at birth? Well, you know, I like Malcolm. I never deal with him because I say that he's a dead being. But I know. I'm I will, just curious. I'm curious. His but name. I will say this. Uh, I took Malcolm X's name. To, because I learned that a name is supposed to be something holy, something righteous. It's supposed to give you something to stand up to. I look at the discipline, the structure, the 14 to 18 to 20 hours a day work that people like Malcolm and Martin and others uh put in and so, I wanted to emulate that uh and well, it's still someone that I'm still trying uh yes. to become because we all are but works in progress. My man. But the names are important and our names were given to us through the process of chattel enslavement and it signifies Ownership, and here we are today, over a hundred years up from chattel enslavement. But if I say my name is Abubakari, some people will have a problem with calling okay. me that. They want to call right. you. So here's the point I was trying to get at: is I'm just I'm gonna I'm just gonna give you a name uh, that you don't want to give, but let's say your name was Simon when you were growing up, and you became Malik Shabazz. The point is, there's 
there can be no Malik Shabazz without the young Simon, but Malik Shabazz has grown and built upon that and become the man he is. Meaning, I'm asking, and I guess, that you don't always have to be locked in the past, in, the, in, in your past actions, you can become a much better person because of that. And you are much wiser than most about your part of the world having gone through it because I don't know another minister who'll kick in the door of a crack house. You understand what I'm saying there? Like, you can grow is what I'm saying. Well, God is in the blessing business, and we should be too. We make our mistake thinking that the Lord is the only one who can bless. We have the power, the authority, and the permission to be a blessing to one another. Now, there's a scripture that tells us perfect love casts out all fear. The way I take that to mean is not that fear is gone, but you learn fear management. When we go out on the street, whether it's a dope house, or a whole house, or a chop shop, or someone has been shot eight times, or people are running around here kidnapping people, you know, you're risking, you're messing with people's business. Mm. Uh, But what I'm saying is the love of God, the love of the ancestors, the love of your people, and my people today, of course, it starts black, But my people are also anybody of any hue who is actually struggling, striving, and straining and sacrificing for a better world, a better society. So it's fear management. Only a fool is never not afraid. Right. But you learn how to manage your fear. When I hear uh, 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 Come on now. Um, I'm... what, what, what's your biggest fear right now, Malik? What the fuck? I was making a nice segue. My biggest fear right now? Uh, Donald Trump and all that he represents. Because it's not never about one man or woman. It's about what that man or woman or group stands for. Yeah. Who they ruling with. Who they running with. And when I look at Donald Trump, and don't get me wrong. Let's go to 2016 quickly. Uh, my first thought was Bernie. After Bernie lost, you know, I kind of, no disrespect, but I kind of held my nose and uh, pretended that Hillary was the one, though she ain't, but is anybody other than Donald Trump. But my point being, we were at a point where in many ways, not totally, But in many ways, we've made great progress in this nation. Now, white supremacy was the order of the day and is the order of the day. It's still the order of the day with Trump. Yeah, it was built on white supremacy. And the White House was built by enslaved Africans. But Donald Trump has moved us from, forgive my words, the standard uh, I hate that the normal uh, uh, levels to back to a hundred years ago, where uh, you gotta be kidding. You gotta be kidding. Well, uh, Malik, how do we change that? Hey, guys, hey, over here, no, how do we no, change no, 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 no. You two aren't gonna have this little thing in a phone booth over there. What are you talking about? This is nowhere near what it was a hundred years ago. Nowhere oh, near no, that. Wait, Charlie, Charlie, oh, Charlie. I would... let me tell you what? something, Charlie. Charlie, what? Barr just said, if you protested police terrorism, and we should call it what it is. Now, I'm not talking about police who are trying to do their great, do a good job. I work with the police. I'm a Black Panther yeah, yeah. who almost every day works with DPD. But for those who are engaging in the activities of what we call terrorism, which is not new. He just said, if you protested, 
don't look for the police support. Well, true, we and true enough. Look, man, you know, maybe well, that, that that was the attorney general. Yeah, bar. Yeah, but, but maybe bar. look, look, the rhetoric. Yes, of a fear of returning to uh, look. There's no way in hell, Malik, 50 years ago, you were even going to be talking to the Detroit police. Charlie, Charlie, white people, not not all, but there are white women jumping on, physically stopping black people from going to swimming pools at their apartment building, from entering their apartment building. I mean, look, man, we're in. Oh, hey, dude, I'm with you. I'm not saying like racism doesn't exist. It's the 1960s. Stuff again. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. I, I, it is I understand. Real. That. I understand and that. We're not careful. I understand Black that. Black people, uh, Chicanos, uh, 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 people who immigrated, women. Uh, if we're not careful, we will find ourselves easily right back where we. Were. We are there you go. See, but look, look here. There you go. You, that's right. I, I, I can agree with that. Right we back to where we were. When the business is, the, hey, come on. It's bad radio when we're yelling over women. each other and a guy oh. keeps just going on. We got to go back and forth here. Look, you're right. I agree with that. But I, I, I cannot really sit here and say, you know, we're, we're back to Jim Crow here. We're not. We've made great strides. We haven't gotten there yet, and I completely agree and appreciate what you're saying. We don't want to go backwards. That Jim that is Crow the middle is ground. The that's the middle ground. Jim I agree Crow with that. Choir is knocking at the door, Charlie. Okay, that that's fair enough. I respect your opinion. I agree with most of it. Let me do this. Let me let me segue then. Kid Rock, you, you did you went down and protested his restaurant, right? Correct. What did you hear in that? Did you listen to that tape? What's I, Bob didn't hear racism in it, and I, I don't think I did either. What, what was racist about being drunk on a stage and talking raunchy about women? Well, let me say this. Um, first of all, I want to recognize Reverend Charles Williams and Sam Riddle and the National Action Network who called for this press conference, and this is not their first merry-go-round with Kid Rock, the Garveyites, the Panthers, we came as backup. Uh, Tito Jackson. Um, Tito was it? What I heard when I watched the tape several times, he sounded like a drunken, uh, on-something fool. Uh, I've heard him say Duck Oprah before. I've heard him say Duck Obama. We don't take kindly to any of that, to the Confederate war flag, battle flag, not the flag of the Confederate nation, but the flag of a nation at war. We don't take kindly to that. And to call Oprah a itch and talk about her sucking your imagination, because you only, I, I, I'm assuming from your behavior, there's only a bump, a pimple, and a couple pubic hairs there. It is disrespectful. <laughs> it is potty mouth. True. It is un- yeah. unacceptable. True. And when you disrespect the black woman, you have disrespected all women because the black woman is the mother of everyone who has ever lived on earth. Well, that that's all true, and I agree with that, Malik. But he also said that about Joy Behar, and she's a white woman, a white Jewish woman. Well, I don't woman. like that either. I okay. don't. No, like I, I, I don't. I don't either. But I'm, I'm just saying. But, yes. I, I saw. I saw it as. I saw. Racist. I saw it as misogynistic. I didn't necessarily it see it as overtly racist. It's sexist and it's filthy, and it's sure. foul. And if you add it up with the flag and the duck Obama, I mean, you don't have to support Obama, though the kid. Uh, supported him in 2008, uh, you don't have to support him or agree with him, but you also don't have to duck him. It is filthy, it is foul, and it is unacceptable. Now, as a, a constitutionally, Kid Rock and any other person has the right to be as ugly, crass, vicious, vile, and foul-mouthed as they want. But the people... The people, all power, 
to the people. The people have the right to organize, mobilize, galvanize. Yep. To set Absolutely. Up but, to, but to call somebody a racist is probably the heaviest thing <laughs> going in America. Everything you say, I, I can agree with that. But racist, especially what you did was you conflate this thing with what he did in the past, which is used to fly the Dixie flag at his concerts. And make no mistake about it, that to me, it's anti-American. My, my ancestors died to take that thing down. It's not the culture of the North. And it is a symbol of... a. De- dividing and tearing down America and the Confederacy was fo- found its foundational element was the superiority of the white race. There can be no doubt about that. The vice president of the Confederacy said as much. There's no doubt about that, but he took it down and he doesn't use it. So like the young Simon before he comes Malik Shabazz, the, can you give a man some room to grow, to grow in his life and understand what he was fucking with and the pain that that caused? Of course I would. I'm heaven rejoices uh, when, 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 when a sinner changes, of course. And we're all sinners, and we all fall short of the glory. Nobody more Amen. than you. Amen. If Kid Rock and anybody who I think is a white supremacist wants to change, wants to grow, I'm more than willing to pray for them, to talk to them, uh, to help them. Because, see, let me tell you something. If the world was taught the truth, that the world, I'm not talking about bits and pieces here and there and African-centered cats like Malik or somebody else, no. I'm talking about stop, standard operating procedure. The world was taught the truth, that life, and light and culture and civilization and blah, blah, blah originated in the continent now called Africa and that, in fact, humanity is one. That's a fact. Everything you said is a fact. I had the opportunity to share that with a kid rock, I would jump at it. Now, there's some black folks would probably get mad at me, but that's my Call it. Yes, That's my call. Let's do this because, uh, you know, we try to keep this thing to an hour. Uh, love to come on your show next week. No doubt. Uh, lovely. I'll, I'll send you uh, a link to this. I'm, you can uh, come. You can bring Karen or you can come. You can bring Bob. Whatever. It's all good. Sweet. Right on. Okay, so l- let's you do this. come on at 8 a.m.? Let's do 8 to 9. Okay. You got it. You got my word okay. on that. Okay, uh, let's take this out with this. Uh, Minister, if you could lead us a prayer, in a prayer, for the enlightenment and the well-being of Bob Ritchie, also known as Kid Rock. If you Let's pray over him and, and show some unity in life. Okay. Don't- Almighty God, we thank you for life. We thank you for light. We thank you for a portion of health. We thank you for a smidgen of sanity. Father God, I'm asking just that you unharden all hearts that are hard, that we view as hard, that the children of those who've been oppressed, recessed, and depressed before this nation was founded, all that we view as hard, and any of us hearts that may be hard, my heart, all hearts, the president heart, the kid rock heart, and anybody else that you would unharden. Open up their hearts, Lord. Break the hate. Break the anger. Break the ignorance. And give us the strength and the commitment and the dedication and determination that we will work together to build a new world, a new society, a more just society where everybody deserves justice, irregardless to your education, your wallet, your purse, or your skin pigmentation, that everybody deserves justice. Your kingdom of peace, power, prosperity, love, safety, and security for all, yet while we live, we ask this prayer 
in the name of your son. No, Amen. 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 All right, brother. Have a good week. You're the weekend. only guy. You're the only guy can get me to pray for Kid Rock and then throw Donald Trump in it. My <laughs> brother Charlie Leduff. You're the only guy. Hey, man. Power to the people and Amen, meat, Rev. potatoes, and Similac for everybody. <laughs> everybody. All right, brother. Thank you. Okay. See you Saturday. Okay, man. Thanks so much, Malik. Okay, Peace now. Thank you. Hmm. Tell you what, folks. I. That was a good prayer. I'm just going to let it go and hang at that, y'all. <clears throat> Decide what you heard there. Yep. Yep. It's interesting. Moving right along, right? He forgot your age. Old age. Love and old age. And loving someone you hate. This is a follow-up to a story I've been covering every year since about 2013 about an old man named Harold, retired firefighter, and an old recluse, a shut-in named Annie, and they knew each other a very long time, and Harold never liked her. She even shot she, him. She didn't like him. She didn't like her second husband either. She shot him. <laughs> and she fell on hard times and became a hoarder, lived in a dilapidated house with no windows, no water, no heat, and drowning in her mania of collection of garbage, and the place caught on fire one night. And she almost didn't make it out. And that's how I came to know her. And we cleaned the place out. We got a furnace in. And I always wondered what was going to happen to Annie. Eventually, the story needed to come to an end. And here is the final story in the book of Harold and Annie, the oddest, queerest love story you've ever heard. You want my key, huh? Now? Yeah, now? and I'll get, bring it back with a sandwich. All right. Give me your keys. And, and with your step ladder. Yeah, I'll, tr- I'll get the step ladder, too. Most every year around the holidays, I write a little story about Annie, the ancient Eastside recluse, and Harold, the retired firefighter, and their odd and bitter love story. All right, I will. Harold looked after Annie while Annie wasted away in a dirty bed in a windowless house surrounded by filth and bric-a-brac. Every time I visited, Annie would berate Harold about this or that. And I would wonder when, and by what happenstance, the 90-year-old Hermitess would pass on. This year, I am happy to report, Annie is no longer with us. She is gone. She's moved away to Arizona and reportedly lives in a nice home for old folks, where her laundry is done, her toenails are clipped, and the food is hot and tasty. This is all very well and fine. Fuck me! <laughs> but the circumstances of her departure left Harold with the taste of spoiled milk. She never told me she was leaving, Harold says. She never said thank you, not kiss my ass, no nothing. In her rush to beat it out of town, Annie left behind her rotting house and the furnace well-wishers bought her after reading about her predicament. Annie also leaves behind her seven cats and the ashes of her dead husband spilling from a cardboard box. And, dear listener, it appears all the while Annie was a very wealthy woman. Annie! Departure was set in motion after she was picked up by police on a cold April night. She was spotted by a patrolman around 2 a.m., wandering up Gratiot in thin clothes and thin shoes. The police took her to the psychiatric ward and then called Harold, knowing from the stories that Harold was a decent neighbor who would check up on Annie. After all, The two had been neighbors for 50 years, from the height of Detroit to its fall, from youth to old age. Yeah, he does everything for me. I'm going to apply for aid. I should have married him, but I I don't know. He said I was too old. After some detective work, Harold and his wife contacted Annie's sister, who lives in Arizona. 
Harold was able to track the sister down after looking for clues in Annie's mail, with Annie's permission, which included Annie's financial papers. Those papers revealed that Annie was worth in excess of $1 million. A few months later, the relatives arrived and without a word to Harold, ferried Annie off to Arizona. I never liked her, Harold said of Annie. She was ornery. I was just trying to do the right thing. Even after I knew she had the money, I still brought donuts and she bitched they were the wrong kind. No good deed, I guess. I placed a call to Annie's sister in suburban Phoenix. It was not a pleasant conversation. But the sister confirms that Annie is now living in the desert and is well taken care of. People from out of the suburbs came in. They donated the, their labor, picking up. They, uh, they just did a lot of different things. They gave money to buy your sheets or your, you know, that I put on your bed and that. But no gesture of gratitude was offered to either Harold or the community for the time and care and expense that was put into the well-being of Annie, who often went without socks. No apology was given for leaving behind the decrepit three-story house that looks as though it's frozen in mid-collapse. And now it is left to Harold to come by twice a week to feed the abandoned cats. And then there is the matter of the husband's ashes. I didn't like that guy either, says Harold of Annie's third husband, whose cremains were left in the attic among photographs and yellow newspaper clippings. But I couldn't just flush him down the toilet. That would be wrong. I do have some morals, you know. The dead husband liked to sail, and so Harold is planning a burial at sea. Moral to the story, there is none. I didn't get nothing but a lot of fucking headaches, says Harold. Still, I'd do it again. I'm stupid like that. Good luck, Annie. Good luck, Annie. You're the best, Harold. Good luck, Harold. Try to do like Harold. Try to give it yourself. Try to one love one another and do the right thing. Thanks for the prayer, Malik. And we'll see y'all next week. Tell your friends. No bullshit news hour. Take us out, Bob. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. When I move, you move. Just like that. When I move. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. How you ain't gon' cut? Girl, I'm me. I'm the cat. Reason you in VIP. CEO. You don't have to CID. I'm young, wild, and like T.I. Lee. Blah! We ain't got nothing to worry about. Whoop. Let security carry him out. Watch out for the medallion. My diamonds are reckless. Feels like a midget is hanging from my necklace. I pulled up with a million trucks. Looking, smelling, feeling like a million bucks. Ah, past the bottles. The heat is on. We in the huddle all f***ing that Cheech and Chong. What's wrong? The club and the moon is full. And I'm looking for a thick young lady to pull. One sure shot way to get him out of them pants. Take note to the brand new dance like this. When I move, you move. Just like that. When I move, you Just like that. When I move, you Just like that. Hell yeah, hey, DJ, bring that back. Go on with your big ass. Let me see something. Tell your little friend he can quit me mugging. I'm lit and I don't care what no one thinks. But where the f is the waitress at with my drinks? My people outside and they can't get in. We gonna rush the back door and break them in. The owner already pissed because we sort of late. But our time and our clothes gotta coordinate. Most girls looking right, some looking a mess. That's why they spilling drinks all over your dress. But Louis Vuitton bras all over your breast. Got me wanting to put hickeys all over your chest. Ah, come on, we gon' party tonight. Y'all use mouth to mouth, bring the party to life. Don't be scared, show another part of your life. The more drinks in your system, the harder to fight. When I move, you move. Just 
like that. Just like that. Just like that. Wanna shut us down, get us out so someone can cut us down. We was two songs away from getting some good up. Now we one song away from tearing the club up. Move over, Luda got something to say. Do it now, cause tomorrow ain't promised today. Work with me, let's become one with the beats. And don't worry about me stepping all over your feet. When I move, you move. Just like that. When I move, you move. Just like that. When I move, you move. Just like that. Hell yeah, hey DJ, bring that back. When I move. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. Hell yeah, DJ, bring that back. Stand up. 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 Stand up.